Now, in our previous examples, we talked about creating the basic structure of a web page using things like heading tags and paragraph tags. We talked about creating tags to help either provide emphasis, like the emphasis and strong tag, or other relevant information, for example, superscript, subscript, deleting text, etc. Now, one thing we said commonly is we could change the way these things look by applying CSS. So let's take a look at some CSS selectors to show you how to actually select a tag that we're going to then change. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes, but let's first focus on the selectors. Now, inside of my head tag, I have a link to a style sheet called CSS slash styles. CSS is the folder that it's in, and then styles.css is the file. I've created this file and right now a CSS file is just blank. Now a CSS file, just like an HTML file, is a plain text file. That means I can edit it in something like Notepad or Notepad++ or text or any of those other types of text files. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code because that's one of my code editors I've been using recently and it works just as well there. To create a selector, for example, with the paragraph tag, I'll simply type in my tag name, in this case P, and that's my selector. All I've done is now I've selected every paragraph tag. I'm going to put some braces, and inside that's going to be my body. So right now I have P for my selector, I have braces for my body. I've got a little bit of a warning that's telling me, it says, wait a second, you have an empty rule set. That's not good. So let me show you how I'm going to apply a rule set to this selector. A rule set is just a set of rules inside of CSS, and they're going to be inside of those braces. In this case, I'm going to choose font-size. And font-size is just going to tell me how big something is. I've got some default text that I could put in there, like large and larger or medium, but that doesn't really tell me what that value is. I like to have specific values. Now, for sizes on a web page, and especially if it's going to be viewed on the web, I like to either use something that's like a percentage, and a percentage can actually be a percentage amount, and it's based off of what a parent uh, size is going to be. Or I'm going to choose a relative size, like rims for relative M size. Or maybe I'll choose something like a pixel amount. I don't want to pick something like a point size, because a point size is actually based upon a physical dimension. And we don't know how many inches are going to be on a screen, and the browser has to make assumptions, and it's just messy. So when I'm choosing sizes for something that's going to be digitally displayed, like in a web browser, I always want to use either an absolute value like pixels, or I want to use a percentage value like percent, rims, etc. Now, in this case, I'm going to choose pixels, and I'm going to choose 20 pixels. And I'm just going to save this real quick. So this is a whole actually CSS declaration. The CSS has my selector, and then it has my body. My body inside of that is my rule set, and the rule set has one or more rules. Each rule is then based off of an attribute that I'm going to change, in this case font size, and a new value. I then will put a semicolon at the end. Now, I don't have to have a semicolon for my very last attribute and value set, but I always like to just so I never forget to do it or maybe add in another value and then it doesn't work. So just as a matter of habit, I always put a semicolon at the end of my rule. Let's go back to our web page real quick, and I'm going to just reload this, and you're going to notice the font size of my text. Notice it automatically gets bigger, okay? That's because by default, your font size tends to be either 14 or 16 pixels. We made this 20 pixels, so it grew larger. Let's look at some other rule sets. Let's look at some other selectors and how they might work. So when I hover over my selector, 
you'll notice that a little pop-up comes up and says selector specificity. Now, this is something that Visual Studio Code does. Not every text editor or HTML editor is going to do this, but it's nice because this helps me know what's the likelihood of this rule being selected. You might say, well, obviously it's going to be selected for paragraphs. Well, yes and no, because I could have other rules that take precedence because it has a higher selector specificity. So let's talk about how we could have a higher selector specificity. I'll just go back to my HTML page real quick. You'll notice I have on my body tag both a class and an ID, a class of full and an ID of sample. So I'm going to come over here and specify a class of full. And if I put my mouse cursor over this one, you'll notice that the selector specificity is 0, 1, 0. And that means that I'm using a class, and classes have more value when being selected over just a tag name. Now, my full and my paragraph tag, right now they're not going to matter because they're two different tags that are being associated. So let's just take a look real quick at how this is going to work. So for my full, let's say I wanted to give a slight background color. So I'll start putting in for my attribute background. And as I type up, it comes up with a wide variety of different attributes I might use. I'm going to choose background color. And then I have some text names and I have what the associated values ought to be. Now I say ought to be because some browsers are going to handle these slightly different than others. I like to put in values that are going to be a little bit more consistent, so the actual hexadecimal value. So let's say I wanted to do a really light uh, blue background. What I need to know for my colors is going to be uh, two hexadecimal values. That's between a 0 and an F. And I have two of those for my red, two for my green, and two for my blue. RGB, if you're familiar with that terminology, red, green, and blue. And with this, this gives me the ability to make almost any color that I would normally see in real life. So if I want a really light blue, I'm going to pick something that's very high to my red and my green, but not all the way to its value. So between 0, 0 and FF, I might have something like pound F0, F0, and that's my red and green, and then FF for my blue. You'll notice that Visual Studio Code actually gives me a little box here that's going to show me what does that look like. So this is not uh, actually inside of my CSS. This is just something my editor is providing for me. So you can go, oh, wait, that's not the color I wanted. Oh, yes, that is the color I wanted. If I save this, go back to my HTML page and reload it, you'll notice that the background takes a slightly different color. The whole purpose of this is because bright white is often really hard to see and read, especially after long periods of time. So often we'll put a, a slight gray or a slight tinge of blue or cream or some color like that to make it a little bit easier to read, especially if we're expecting people to be on our site for a long time. Now, how much this is going to be or how little is very dependent upon your design style and what the web page is supposed to be for. If I have a background color that's really dark, then I would want to have some text that's going to be pretty bright. And let's take a look at an example like that. And we're also at the same time going to show you that specificity. So if I want to set an ID, which remember I have an ID inside my web page and it is called sample, I will use a selector of pound sample. This will provide a specificity of 100, which is the most specific that I can get for a single selector. Now, typically, we will only use our styles with tags and classes. We don't typically apply them with an ID. IDs are more for if we're using things like JavaScript and we're wanting to have interactive 
uh, web pages and some JavaScript that's going to interact with them. But we do have the ability, but we just don't normally do it. But for our example, we're just going to show this real quick. And once again, I'm going to have a background color and I'm going to choose a dark background color. And choose zero, zero, zero. And that is black. You might say, well, how come I have three and not six? Well, CSS has a little shortcut for us. And this is just designed to make it a little bit easier for us. If all of my values are the same, so I have, remember, three sets of two numbers. And if each set of those two numbers is the same, so if I had like AA, B, B, C, C, or in this case, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I only need to put one digit. Now, I have to have all three the same. That's one of the rules. I have to have all three the same. So 0, 0, 0 is equivalent of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If I save this real quick and go back to my sample page, you're going to notice that I have black background. That's because the ID specificity says this rule takes precedence over defining a class. Now, the downside to this, of course, is I have black text on a black background, which means I have zero ability to read my text. So I'm going to come back here to my CSS document and I'm going to choose color and I'm gonna choose white. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the built-in white predefined value. I'm gonna save this, go back to our HTML document and reload, and now you notice that I have white text. Even though I didn't define that white on my paragraph tags and my heading tags, they are children of the body tag and they don't overwrite something themselves. Instead, they are taking that value from their parent and they inherit it is what the technical term is. And since they inherit that value, all I had to do was modify that body tag and it propagates through the rest of my values until I have a tag where I've specifically stated it to have a color otherwise. So that's the real basics of selectors in CSS. Using our CSS declaration, which is our selector, our rule set made up of individual rules, and each rule has an attribute and a value pair that work together. And in this way, we have a way to start actually putting some design elements into our web page.